Hi, uh, today I thought we'd have a nice nerdy look at the original Nord lead from the 90s. So let's have a ganders. So this is my original Nord lead 1 by Clavier. Uh, it comes from 1996. Uh, to be more accurate, actually, it's the software version 2.x of the original Nord lead. Uh, the original Nord League came out in 1995. This is a revision that they made, which is also available for the original as an expansion. It adds in uh, extra voices of polyphony, which takes the original up from 4 to 12, which is what this can do. It adds in a multi timbral mode, a drum synthesis, and a memory card slot. It was one of the first of a new batch of virtual analog synths that came along in the 90s. Uh, for the first time, it was possible to emulate the sound of an analog synth uh, using a microprocessor. So it comes from an interesting time and also has a very specific sound. So before we get into how it sounds, let's have a, just have a quick look around the back and see what connections we've got. So around the back we've got a set of quarter inch sockets, a headphone, left and right outputs, a pedal output which has been switched from sustain to expression, MIDI in and out but no through. There's a memory card slot that takes a standard PCM card that holds your saves for patches and multis. So these memory cards can hold an additional 297 uh, single sounds and 100 performances on top of the memory that's already in the Nord. I would say it's essential to get one of these cards because the functionality is going to be severely reduced without one. And there's a power cable, which as you can see is fixed into place. So the front panel is quite knob laden. Uh, that's the thing that attracted me to it uh, when I first looked at this synth, because I wanted something that was fast and immediate to program, mostly for live use. I was replacing an MS-10 that I still have actually that's borrowed off a mate but I wanted something with some polyphony to play live as well as replace the uh, monosynth with something that would tune more easily um, and then you've got a uh, 4 octave keyboard and a really nice pitch bend and mod wheel I really like this setup, uh, I understand it's not everyone's first choice but personally I prefer this to a standard double mod wheel sort of style setup because the pitch wheel Pitch bend is particularly responsive and great for doing uh, vibrato. Uh, also, it's worth mentioning that the body is steel. Um, I actually have a couple of little magnets for holding on set lists and things for when I played live, so it's actually quite useful little area to pin bits of information or a blue tacker effects unit on because this has no effects in built in, it's completely dry. So, this is a really useful area to stick a, a chaos pad or, or some sort of effects unit. So here you can see all the controls laid out. This is the updated uh, face plate for the, the original Nord. Now let's dive straight into manual mode. If you go into manual mode, you're not no longer in a memory. All the sounds will just be produced from wherever the knobs are right now, just like a proper monosynth, which is obviously going to be a bit weird. So I'll just quickly make a initialized patch. All right, that'll do. So, you've got two F LFOs, uh, one of which can function as an ARP. You've got a modulation envelope, two oscillators, uh, two more envelopes, a filter, and a section that mixes and alters the pulse width of your oscillators. And then over here you've got utility functions and velocity and morph settings. So let's just check out the oscillators to start with. I'll just turn the resonance off, open the filter. So you've got, here we're on oscillator one, square, saw, and a nice triangle. And then on oscillator two, if we crank it around to there, we've got the same basic waveforms, but then also noise, which can also be filtered using the semitone uh, knob, which alters the pitch of the standard oscillators, which is at zero when that lights up, and also at octaves. And the octave light also extinguishes when we're at zero fine tune. So on oscillator 2 we also have a keyboard tracking control, so we can turn off tracking. 
for uh, effects and modulation. We have a pulse width which affects both uh, squares simultaneously. Obviously the oscillators are digital, but they don't have like an annoying amount of aliasing, but they are capable of aliasing. So here we have a triangle wave set up on oscillator 2. If we go into the highest octave setting, that's still quite clean. Once we get above this, you can hear a bit of aliasing coming in there. I hope, I don't know if it'll come across well on the YouTube, but then once we get beyond this, things start getting really nuts. So there's a section on all the oscillators where it goes absolutely nuts. Which I quite like. So we could certainly use that for some special effects. Generally speaking, if you stick to the normal range for oscillators... They're really clean sounding. Okay, saws a little bit uh, aliased at the top there, but generally speaking, they're really usable. So that brings us on to FM. So we've got FM between oscillator one and two. Oscillator two affecting oscillator one's shape. Okay, let's just set that to octave. So two uh, triangle waves that do kind of traditional sounding FM sounds, and then you've got some more, much more unusual stuff. With noise and square. Into kind of LFO territory. Which, by the way, is the only way to get any kind of square wave modulation going because there isn't that waveform on the LFO. And then, obviously, so obviously you can change the semitone and fine tune for oscillator two to get some really wild stuff going on. You can also modulate the amount using the mod envelope. So if we switch to mod uh, FM amount. Program some nice responsive um, FM sounds. All the knobs, by the way, can be modulated by velocity using the velocity morph uh, mapping section. So, in this case, we could map uh, the amount to velocity to get some expressiveness into our FM sounds. It's actually quite a capable uh, machine in that respect, although obviously only kind of two operators if you're thinking in terms of the way uh, Yamaha would describe it. Then next we have um, a sync mode, which syncs oscillator 2 to oscillator 1's pitch. And again we have uh, the option on mod envelope. To create some nice sync. Uh, hoover type sounds and then if we introduce FM whilst in sync mode again we're into absolutely nuts mode because those two things aren't really compatible with each other So you can get it to absolutely scream and do some really, really, really strange things. So moving on, we've got a standard ADSR envelope with a game per patch knob, which is saved into programs. And obviously you've got a master level on the left. You've got another ADSR for the filter and then Cut off from resonance for the filter, 
an envelope amount, and then filter types. The only unfortunate thing is the envelope amount only goes into positive values, so you can't reverse modulate your, your cutoff. You can only positively modulate it, which makes the high pass filter kind of tricky to use. So filter modes, there's uh, 12 dB low pass. With resonance. Um, what I will say is it's trying to emulate some sort of ladder filter, but uh, anything more than about halfway resonance really, really kills off the bottom end. To the point where it sounds as though it's quieter with the resonance turned up. Particularly in a live situation, that can be a bit of a pain. There are, is a way to program gain to follow resonance if you're using the morph it's a bit of a pain but you can then use morph as resonance and also track volume so it makes up for it but it's a bit of a strange workaround so you've got notch and low pass which i really like it almost has a kind of vocal quality to it uh, 12, uh, 24 db Got a band pass. And high pass. So I have a single uh, button to add velocity to the envelope amount. So for example, you can make some really expressive uh, bass and lead type sounds, which are really playable. And then there's a keyboard tracking for the cutoff as well, which is just 100% or off. We've got a portamento section. With a choice of uh, just a sort of free running portamento or an auto. Which is welcome. Uh, we've got an LFO with a noise, saw and triangle, which can target both oscillators, uh, pulse width, filter, or oscillator 2 alone. I find the speed a little bit unwieldy on this thing. Uh, it's sort of... all the best stuff is kind of there. It's kind of doing nothing there, and then... goes into absolutely crazy speed the top, which is useful as well, obviously. On LFO2, there's only a triangle wave available. There's no uh, choice of other waveforms. So most of the time, you're best off using this to modulate oscillators 1 and 2's pitch. So there's also an ARP in here with... Uh, so up down with a choice of octaves on this knob. And then ARP up and down when they're both together. You've got ARP up alone. Random. And then AMP for tremolo effects. And then Echo, which is an interesting one, in that it's not an effect. With the right knob, you set the number of repeats. But it expects velocity to be routed to something in order for the repeats to decay. Uh, so it's kind of unusual to use, and I've never really found a use for it other than for making odd noises. <laughs> Because as a, as a substitution for a delay, it doesn't really work for me. You can never seem to get it to sound as you expect. So we've got a play mode. So this is mono, which re-triggers the envelopes. We've got legato, which doesn't. And then we poly polyphony. And then we also have a unison mode. Which can uh, thicken up the voices by using twice the polyphony. 
uh, you have to change the detune amount for this so we're going into one of the system menus shift system u and then you can alter the detune amount which is a bit of a pain especially when you forget where it is which i just did and had to look up in the manual so your um mod wheel can be assigned to different functions so filter is quite a useful one obviously and you've got fm amount oscillator 2 tuning and then the LFO1 amount, I think it is. Also morph, and this is where the morph and velocity function comes into play. Using this you can set two patches on one program that the morph function can morph between. So for example if I wanted the mod wheel to control the pulse width of the square wave, I set that as my normal position, activate this, set that, press set again, and now pulse width is being modulated by the uh, modulation wheel. It's not just restricted to one function though, you can change everything on the front panel and then the morph function will morph between those settings. As soon as we move the shift button to change this type, something else then velocity will alter it. So we can get some really expressive stuff going. For, for example we want the velocity to change the attack of the amplifier envelope. We set our softest setting first then set down to our hardest. Velocity will then alter that. So Using that you can create some really expressive playable patches, some really odd morphing patches. So it's really quite a powerful function. So beyond that there's also some really boring menu diving stuff here with syncing LFOs and changing the pedal input on the back, but I'm not going to go into those because it's a bit dull. Uh, but um, if you come out of manual mode, our number here shows which patch we're on. The original and this when it hasn't got its, mem when it hasn't got its memory card in has 99 memories. But only 40 of those are programmable by the user. So if we go up beyond where I've been messing around. Try a few presets. Some really weird stuff. They're not the most usable, <laughs> has to be said. Then once you get past 99, if you hold shift actually you can skip through in tens you're into the drum synthesis section. Now the drums have eight sounds mapped to clusters of white notes and they can be edited by pressing the black notes. So all these sounds are sort of based on drum machine type, type sounds. So here we can see a bit of a problem with editing the Nord. Uh, these drum sounds for example, if I like the cowbell sound that's up here uh, on the middle C, if I then press the black key that's for editing it, I can edit the sounds. But I would say I want, for example, I want to learn how this was made. As soon as I start moving knobs, we've lost the original sound. And then I'm going to have to guess where those knob positions were. There's no way of recalling them from memory, say for example like in a microcorg where you can see the knob values on the 7 second display that information isn't, isn't available here, so as soon as you've saved the patch into memory and you've moved your knobs you've kind of done with it, going back to edit it is going to be tricky because finding where all those knob positions are is, is really difficult having said that the sounds are really nice and the, the presets included are, are exceptional so often I just end up building stuff using the drum sounds that come with it and not actually changing them which is a shame because it's quite a capable synth engine for percussion. So now if we hold shift and press manual we're into performance mode and these numbers are now our different performance uh, saves. So here's one I was working on so we've got four setting, four slots that can receive different MIDI channels so you've got, I've got a bass, a lead sound, sort of pad and then percussion on D so it's totally possible to build up an entire song just using the output of the Nord. 
The outputs of the different channels can be split to the different channels on the back of the Nord as well, panned left and right uh, for mixing separately, but obviously only to two outputs. So it's good for basses, it's good for leads, it's good for chuggy sort of arpeggiated sounds, and it's good for weird noises, but it doesn't really do pads particularly well. For a start, you've only got two oscillators. Your unison mode only doubles the sound, and at the same time halves the polyphony. And also the LFOs themselves are mono, meaning that by re-triggering keys you can't restart the LFO, which is a nice way to get some extra movement in. That's not possible. So it's a bit restrictive in that respect. You, you will run into limitations when it comes to making big, evolving sounds. It's not really something that does particularly well. The lead also has a few uh, Easter eggs, one of which is a completely separate synth engine hidden away, uh, which I've yet to try, so I'll be saving that for a separate video. So overall, if I had to describe the sound of the Nord, I'd say it's somewhere around sort of raw without being dirty. It kind of straddles the line between digital and analog quite nicely. It's very playable, it's very responsive, but then you will run into some problems if you want to create big sounding patches. It's kind of everything good about basic synthesis without anything too over the top. It sounds much nicer with some effects on as well, obviously that's not an option without something external. I would say it stands up quite well to modern scrutiny and it stands the test of time quite well. So this is already getting a very very long video. Uh, apologies if it got a little bit deep. <laughs> uh, so I will be uploading a jam using just sounds from the Nord, uh, just as an example of what it's capable of. Uh, but if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. Thanks very much for watching and stay tuned for more.